it's nice to see you again. Thank you. Nice to see you. We uh, talked here in New York during the Killing Fields, and of course, what a fantastic success you had with that. Do you still sometimes kind of pinch yourself and wonder if it, if it all really happened just that way? Uh, yeah, I've had to stop pinching myself for, for fear of going black and blue, but yes, I do sometimes. <laughs> now you have another, what looks to be another major success here with the mission. I'm wondering, was, was this in some ways a more difficult film even than Killing Fields? Oh, I think on every level it was going to be more difficult. It's more difficult to bring alive, uh, more difficult to reconstruct the past, and more difficult to reconstruct the past in a way that when people go and see the film, they forget. And if the film's working, and I, I think this is what's happening as I've watched it with audiences, it's as though people go in, in a space-time machine, and suddenly there they are in the world, it's the 18th century, but it doesn't feel like it. It actually feels as though it's today, and, and that was a difficult thing to achieve. As far as just the physicality of it, w that was more difficult also? Yes, it was, because in the killing fields in the main, we were working near towns, um, and we could use towns and we had all the resources. On this film, uh, our locations were at least 60 kilometers away from the hotels, down Colombian roads that seemed to have been designed by stringing potholes together, uh, which made the drive, the drives were always appalling. Um, and it was hot and the jungle was full of inconvenient things like scorpions and snakes and tarantulas and, and uh, though we made a lot of noise and hopefully scared them all away. But you were never quite sure about what you were going to sit on. Then uh, the scenes where, uh, <coughs> I think, ex me. excuse <laughs> bless you, God bless you. Uh, the scenes, um, for instance, uh, the, the rock climbing scenes and the mountain climbing scenes, now, um, we know, of course, with the magic of movie making, you, you can make it look all that arduous when, in fact, it wasn't that bad. So, uh, really, what do we have here? A combination of magic and reality, or what? You, yes, you have a combination of magic and reality. I mean, if you'd seen us from the other side of the camera, you would have seen camera platforms suspended in rather curious places. We had to build three miles of walkways over the waterfalls. We had to build steps and staircases. We had to fly our equipment in by helicopter. Um, so it was difficult to get to, but it wasn't really that dangerous. So I tried to select places where it would be safe for the crew. On the other hand, um, my real worry was that somebody would be relaxed because it looked safe and would take a step backwards off a platform and that would be the last step they ever took. So there was, I was nervous. I was nervous that people would just relax and that's when the slip would happen. That's very easily done. But most of the danger is on the screen, I'm glad to say. Did you have accidents? We pretty much didn't. I. Th I think I probably, I probably had the worst accident of anybody, and I come to think of it, I um, was standing on a piece of rock watching something and moved sort of to the left, and the piece of rock I was standing on broke off, and I actually slipped down and made a cut which went straight right into my knee, um, which was very deep. I, mean, I had to have stitches and things. I didn't actually notice. I just went on working until I discovered that this wet feeling on my leg was not sweat. Um, but otherwise, it was bumps and bruises in the main. I mean, I think that's the worst, that's the worst thing that happened to us. How long were you there? Well, we shot in Colombia for 12 weeks, and then we went off to Argentina for three, which is where the waterfall is, in between Argentina and Brazil. It's one of the wonders of the world. I mean, anybody, anybody who feels like taking, and you can go there, uh, a honeymoon visit, I can't think of anywhere more beautiful. Put your arm around somebody that you love than standing on those waterfalls, and you can, you can get there. Well, how do you pronounce the waterfalls? It's called Iguazu. The Iguazu Falls, um, and you can get there from Brazil or Argentina, depends which direction you're coming from. Was the political climate favorable for you down there? Well, we were in a funny situation, uh, in a way, because in Argentina, we were officially at war with Argentina because we were Britons. Um, although we obviously had American money in the project, so in a sense we were an American, um, we were an American company. And I was watching the crew and the, the army who were working together. Uh, at one point, thought, so this is magnificent. I mean, here are human beings working hand in hand virtually on a project that everybody is having huge fun. And not so long ago, they were at each other's throats. I mean, I loved that, that change. And said a lot for the Argentinians that they let us come. Might be another movie. <laughs> Might be another movie, absolutely. <laughs> the football match certainly could have been. De Niro, by his own admission, is not an easy person to work with. Now, you take a difficult person and you put him in an impossible situation like you had. What do you come up with? You come up with a wonderful performance, I think. I mean, that's generally what you come up with. Because um, I think Bob's performance is terrific. I think there's a new actor born here that America hasn't seen before in terms of the subtlety of what he does. You think of his face at the beginning of the film and think of his face at the end. 
I mean, this is a man who's been through the most extraordinary psychological change. Um, and he doesn't have the safety of lines to tell you that's what he's doing. It's not like most films where it's hours of discussion. Here you experience it, you feel it. I um, mean, I think that was born out of taking him to those locations. And he's not, really, he's not really a difficult person. I think he's unfair on himself. What he is, is a real worker. I mean, he really works. Anybody who goes to the cinema to watch a Bob De Niro film should know that that man has earned his money. He, I mean, he works as hard as he can. He asks questions. He becomes the character. He, he absorbs everything that he can absorb. He learned to fence. He learned to horse ride. He learned to be Robert De Niro as if, as if he'd been born in the 18th century. Um, and I think that came out of the locations. What happens when you have an actor, De Niro or whomever, when it comes to a situation where they don't want to do something that way or they, you know, they want to have the final word? You're the director. Ultimately, you're responsible. So who wins? I guess it's a horses for courses question, and it, it, it would vary. Um, I think if you're a good director, I may regret this in years to come, but I think if you're a good director, you don't ever allow situations to quite get to that position. If you're persuasive enough, if you've taken enough of the film on you, uh, you're carrying the actor with you. Um, and you do it up front. And Bob and I were very, very frank with each other right at the beginning of the film. Because what I said was, the last thing I want is for you and I to have a disagreement in the middle. We've got to get it right now. And even if you don't want to talk about it, we should. In fact, he wanted to talk about it. So we did all our work up front. Um, and that made for a very good relationship. And Jeremy Irons, can he be just as persistent? Oh, Jeremy is, you know, is going to be a very, very great actor too. I mean, there's no doubt about that. He's a very, very fine actor, and he's got a great career coming up for him. And he'll find himself in those positions. And he certainly works as hard as Bob. Different technique, but certainly works as hard. Um, and that made that made it interesting too to combine those two techniques and find the language for drawing them together. Well, it's a beautiful, magnificent film. I can only wish that it will be as successful for you in every way as The Killing Fields. Thank you very much. And thanks for your time today. I enjoyed talking with you again. Thank you. In what way was this film more difficult than The Killing Fields? Did you have any accidents? By his own admission, De Niro is not an easy actor to work with. Now, you take a person like that in, the, in this arduous situation you were in, and what do you come up with? We know, of course, with the magic of movies that uh, things don't always are not... With the magic of movies, we know that things aren't always as difficult as they might appear on the screen. So what do we have here, a combination of magic and reality, or what? And I'll just give you reactions. Okay, thank you.